President Putin visited China and met with uh, President Xi. Uh, to lay out what the implications are of that meeting and what we can expect to see going forward, we're joined by Dr. Michal Lubina of the Jagiellonian University. Doctor, welcome to TVP World. Thanks for taking the time. Nice to be with you. So the 40th visit or the 40th meeting between these two men. Um, now, that, that uh, certainly indicates a level of closeness that we don't see between world leaders anywhere. What does it tell you? Well, this is uh, a sort of regularity in Russia-China relations because these relations are built on on the personal relations uh, between their leaders. Um, that's one remark. The other one is that, um, well, as you mentioned, this is quite unlike in the democratic world, but this is one of the assets of the authoritarian regimes that uh, they usually, um, their leaders usually stay in power for longer. So on the bureaucratic level, on the institutional level, that offers a sort of stability. Of course, of course, the stability is not everywhere in uh, in authoritarian states. The, they have much more weak points than uh, than assets. But in this particular regard, uh, this is their asset that they can build a sort of uh, regularity, continuity. That uh, this is um, a, a sort of normal in Russia and China relations. That uh, the summitry, this continuous meetings, they meet at least once a year and quite often more often than than, than once a year. And uh, um, and this is a shadow everyone has already adjusted to. So um, uh, Putin is in power for now 24 years. Um, I'm not counting this this uh, um, funny interlude of Medvedev uh, because Putin was also in charge there. Um, effect, uh, but and Xi Jinping is in power since 2012. So uh, so that's quite a quite quite uh, quite a long time, uh, and um, and that offers regularity. And this is. Is a big um, and that strengthened, of course, bilateral relations. Like you mentioned, they had quite a while to now strengthen the curious friendship. Um, we do know that one of the areas of um, cooperation that were discussed was, well, in fact, Ukraine and China has proposed Ukraine peace plan. So how do you think might China's proposed plan influence conflict resolution process? Do, can it really? Well, China doesn't really want to end this war or precisely if Russia wins this war or if there is a political settlement favorable to Russia, then of course China would be more than happy to accept that. But basically, China is not a honest broker in this regard because China is effectively, effectively supporting one side, uh, that is uh, Russia. Um, so um, all those peace plan, this is just a talk uh, for um, for several audiences. First is, of course, the Chinese audience, and, but even more important is the Global South audience, because then China can pos uh, present itself as a, as a, as a peacemaker and, uh, and a country that is uh, non-aligned in this regard. But that's uh, actually a false narrative. Uh, as for Russia, Russia doesn't want anyone to meddle into this, uh, this war, because Russia still believes it can win this war, uh, so it doesn't need um, uh, any any peacemakers now, but on the other hand, China, uh, Russia is dependent on China. China is now the single most important country for Russia. Without China, Russia would not be able to to continue this war and um, and uh, would not be able to dream uh, um, to that uh, to, it, it wouldn't be able to dream for victory uh, in in the war. So uh, just for courtesy, uh, but also for um, uh, in order to keep uh, the, the Chinese on their side, um, Russia needs to uh, you know publicly um, endorse the peace uh, project. But this is just a a, a diplomatic uh, diplomatic. Um, um, well, talks and, yeah. uh, and this is not the essence. Yeah, Doctor, I mean, that, that's interesting you say that. I mean, um, President Xi has been in, in Europe recently, um, you know, he visited Hungary and, in, in particular, uh, and uh, it sounds as though he's trying to, to increase Chinese investments in, in Europe. Um, and basically this sounds, well, it, he, he's reliant also on the European market, is he not? So there is a delicate balancing act 
that he's undertaking at the moment, between keeping Europe happy enough with Chinese policy to allow them to manufacture and sell here, and at the same time exploit uh, um, Putin's cheap oil that uh, I'm sure he's doing at the moment. Uh, what do you think his plan is to balance these things? Well, I couldn't agree more with your remark about the balancing act of the Chinese because um, um, geopolitically speaking, the Chinese want to keep Europe away from the US. They don't want Europe to unite with US in their anti-China policies. So, so in this regard, it's essential for China to to maintain um, well workable contacts with 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 Europe and in uh, particularly Western Europe. So, in this regard, well, uh, Europe would serve as the good West. Uh, contrary to the bad West, which is the United States in the Chinese narrative. So that's one thing. Uh, but the other thing is that from a European perspective, the ending the war in Ukraine is essential. And um, everyone knows that that uh, it's uh, the, uh, only Russia can end this war. So Europe is pushing China to leverage uh, Russia. But China um, doesn't want to do it and, and probably is not able to do it. Because although China is uh, much stronger than Russia and in the bilateral bilateral relations, we have a, a growing asymmetry in, in, in favor of China. Nevertheless, there are limits to China's influence on Russia. And uh, China is not able to, say, make a call to Putin and say, Mr. President, end this war. So, um, uh, and, but, but, and moreover, China is not willing to do that because, uh, uh, because Russia is much more important uh, for, uh, for China for many, many reasons. So basically, there is this balancing act. So China would love Europe uh, or would love Europe to agree to remove Russia from the list of problems. But on the other hand, Russia has brought war to Europe on such a scale first time since World War II. So it wouldn't be that easy to uh, to go on. But uh, when we look at um, Xi Jinping's visit to Europe, we see uh, that he visited uh, two vassal states of China, that is Hungary and Serbia, and he visited um, a swinging state, France. So it made a lot of um, sense uh, um, from, from the Chinese perspective. But we will see how it will, will develop now. And uh, hopefully we'll see perhaps some breakthrough. I know that it's, it's a very, um, well, big words to say that we do have hope that perhaps China might influence no, Russia so that now this war could be over. But, um, well, let's hope for that. Thank you so much for joining us today and bringing in your insights.